Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences, and in it, we're looking at the second online quiz for Chapter 10, which is on the analysis of variance. The first question in this quiz is, the analysis of variance is useful if you want to A, compare the mean income of men and women, or B, compare the mean incomes of people in several different jobs, or C, test the change in scores for a group of people before and after an intervention, or do you compare the number of men and women in different political parties? The answer in this case is B, compare the mean incomes of people in several different jobs. I'll show you that one in just a second. Let me talk about the other ones. A, compare the mean income of men and women. Well, that's a situation where you would want to use, excuse me. <coughs> that's a situation where you would want to use a two sample t-test because you only have two groups of people and you're comparing them on a quantitative um, outcome variable. Uh, C, test the change in scores for a group of people before and after an intervention. That's when you want to use a repeated measures t-test because you're looking at differences for one group of people across two points of time. And then finally, D, compare the number of men and women in different political parties. It's actually a situation because it's frequencies or it's a nominal variable you're counting where you would want to use something called the chi-square test, which we'll talk about in the last chapter of this course. But here you have it. Um, if you want to compare the means of income of people in several different jobs, now this is a chart I showed more for, uh, for regions, but the analysis of variance lets you look at the, compare the population means for several different populations. Here we have four. Um, and that's just a situation where you want to use something called the one-way analysis of variance. Okay, number two. The version of ANOVA that is used to compare, for example, the well-being of people from the three largest countries in North America is called the A, one-way ANOVA, B, three-way ANOVA, C, factorial ANOVA, or D, population ANOVA. Well, I said just a second ago, this is a one-way ANOVA or analysis of variance. A three-way analysis of variance is for when you have three different factors or three categorical variables that you're using to classify people. We have just one classifying variable here and that is which country they're in. The factorial ANOVA, well, that's for when you have multiple factors, but right now we only have one, and population ANOVA is, is just something silly that I made up. Anyhow, it's the exact same chart that we saw just a second ago. If you have several different groups <coughs> that are all different categories within the same categorical variable, then you would want to use a one-way analysis of variance to compare the means. So you could do it to compare you know, the, the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, or you could use it to compare north, south, east, west, or whatever you wanted. Okay, the third question, what is the null hypothesis for ANOVA? And the uh, choices are A, all group distributions are identical, or B, the difference between groups are smaller than the differences within groups, or C, all group means are, are equal, or D, the sum of squares between is equal to the sum of squares within. Well, the answer is C, all group means are equal. Now, all group distributions are identical would look tempting, but remember, the analysis of variance is comparing means, not the entire distribution. They could have very different shapes, they could have very different levels of kurtosis or variance or whatever, but as long as the means are the same, that's what goes in the numerator of the formula, then it's going to come out as a zero, that's the null. The difference between the groups are smaller than differences within groups, well, that would get you a value of f that is between 0 and 1, but it wouldn't be 0. Um, and then ss between is equal to ss within. That would get you an, uh, as a value of 1 for the analysis of variance. And again, the null is that it's 0. And um, here's just a chart I showed you during the lecture. This is when you have two factors, each of which has uh, two levels, so two categorical variables, the two categories in each. And in this case, the distribution the mean is identical for all four. So that is the null situation for an analysis of variance. Okay, number four. Imagine a study that compared men and women, that's the gender factor, uh, who were socially liberal or conservative, that's the social attitudes factor, on levels of empathy. If there were significant differences between men and women regardless of social attitudes, then the gender factor would be called, um, and your choices are A, a significant main effect, B, a significant interaction effect, C, a significant manipulation effect, or D, a spurious effect? The answer is a significant main effect, and what that is, is when a factor cause is associated with differences in means averaged across all of the other factors. 
Now, significant interaction would be that if the effect of gender depended on the level of uh, social attitudes, a manipulation effect, well, you know, that's, that's actually not a term. Um, you could see it as similar to a main effect, but I just made it up. And a spurious effect means it's just an accident, like a type 1 error, and you, know, you have no way of knowing that. Um, anyhow, this is what a significant main effect, for instance, would look like. Um, on a two-factor analysis of variance where we're looking at factor B. So the two bars on the left have a higher average than the two bars on the right, and the uh, whether they're blue or red is irrelevant, and so that is a significant main effect. Number five, in order to conduct an analysis of variance, the dependent variable or DV must be A, a nominal variable, B, an interval or ratio level variable, C, a continuous variable, or D, a ratio level variable only? The answer in this case is B, an interval or ratio level variable. Now, this is the dependent variable. That's the outcome variable. And the analysis of variance, it's the predictor variable, or if it's an experiment, the independent variable. That must be an, a categorical variable, so that means nominal or sometimes ordinal. Um, so that would be a continuous variable. A continuous, sometimes people use continuous to mean quantitative, but a quantitative variable can be discrete. For instance, the number of children, you have one or two or three, that's discrete because they come in whole number chunks. Um, and then ratio level only? No, because you can calculate means and standard deviations and whatnot for an interval variable also. So anyhow, that's the answer for analysis of variance. And you can see here, because if you go off, you know, because we have here on the left, the statistic is F, and you use the mean squares, and then on the right side, you see that the mean squares, you have to be able to calculate a mean. You see the mean there, right uh, on the far right. And you can only calculate the mean for an interval or ratio level variable, that is the quantitative uh, ones. And so, anyhow, that's where we are on that one. And that's the end of the second quiz. Thanks.